Hello, welcome to France Van Cat. I'm Louise Hanna. We begin, of course, in Egypt, where this weekend we've seen some of the worst violence since February's uprising. At least four more people have been killed on Sunday in clashes with police, taking the death toll now to six. Well, we can now cross live to our correspondent in Cairo, Catherine Stapley. Catherine, thank you for joining us. You're in Tahrir Square. We're getting mixed reports. Protesters saying they're being shot with rubber bullets. The police saying that they're showing restraint. What exactly is the situation there, Catherine? OK, thank you for all those details. Our correspondent in Cairo, Catherine Stapley. Well, France 24's correspondent Francois Picard has also been in Tahrir Square talking to demonstrators. Take a look. OK, to Syria now. The opposition at Free Syrian Army says it's hit the Damascus headquarters of the ruling Ba'at Party on Sunday with several rocket-propelled grenades. Witnesses say loud explosions were heard, but the government has described the reports as absolutely baseless. Journalists, of course, aren't allowed into Syria, making it hard to verify accounts. But if an attack has taken place, it marks a shift in the eight-month violence, bringing it right to the heart of the capital. This as President Bashar al-Assad insists he won't be cowed. Spain has a new government. The Conservative Popular Party swept into power on Sunday with 44% of the vote so far, with just 10% of polling stations yet to declare. Party leader Mariano Rajoy has shown he's keen to get down to business, saying in his victory speech he's ready to battle the Eurozone crisis. Just 24 hours after the arrest of Saif al-Islam Gaddafi and Libya's revolutionary fighters have landed another big catch, former intelligence chief Abdullah al-Sanusi. He's been captured alive by a brigade from the southern region of Fazan. Let's take a look now at why it's another significant victory for Libya's new rulers. And a U.S. super committee is set up to find $1.2 trillion worth of savings to shave off the country's deficit is set to concede defeat. Congressional aides say barring a breakthrough, the 12-member group can't agree on a way forward. The White House is now urging the committee to make some tough choices to avoid the same deadlock we saw in the U.S. administration this summer. At the heart of the issue is the fact Republicans want to see big spending cuts, the Democrats' hikes in taxes. That's all for now. We're back in 20 minutes.